Hello, today I'm going to be speaking, teaching, and preaching on You Are In A War, part two. Let's pray. Father God, help me today, O God, to speak, teach, and preach your word, O God. Give me, Father, the fire and the fervence, Father, to touch the people's hearts, O God, that they may receive this word that you have put in my heart, O Lord, that they may use these weapons of warfare, or these weapons of spiritual warfare that you have given, that they may combat the enemy, O God, Father, and that they may stop losing these battles, O God, and start to win and start to receive and start to walk in victory that you have set as the president, O God, the president, in Jesus' mighty holy name, amen and holy amen. I want us first to turn to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. Say amen when you're there. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. This is a continuation from the previous message, you are in a war. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. And verse 5 says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing everything into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I want us to focus on verse 4 then. Our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty with God in the pulling down of strongholds. As the previous message said, our weapons, our spirit, our weapons in this war are not carnal. We have now realized that we are in our war, but how do we fight it? How do we fight in this war? Well, God has given us our weapons. Some of you may know about some of them, but do you know? about all of them and one of the most important weapons i have to say right now which has saved my life countless of times is prayer prayer you may think that prayer is such a simple thing in christianity it's such everyone does that but when you pray with the fervence and when you pray with the fervence and when you pray in tongues and with the blood of jesus and you actually pray. You don't pray because you want to. But you pray. Because you're fighting the battle. That is when the mountains move. That's when, that's when the mountains move. Jesus said that you must have faith as small as a mustard seed. When you pray, that's when the mountain moves. Prayer is the action. It's putting the faith. We can say, oh, we have faith. But is that putting it into action? We need an action to show that we are actually using the faith that we say that we have into action. And that is when the mountains are moved. And that is through prayer. Through prayer. That is when the mountains move. And that is when the enemy will move for you. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Surrender it all to God. And now that you've surrendered it all to God because you laid your life down on the cross when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now you resist the devil. And the way you resist the devil is through prayer. Prayer is our key weapon of warfare. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. Cutting through even bone marrow. Sharper than a two-edged sword. And you know how we pray? We take the example of Jesus. Jesus, when he was in the wilderness, did he use his authority? He didn't use his authority. He could have. He could have used his authority as God and said, Satan, go. I'm God, so you have to move. But he used what everyone of us can do today. He used what all of us can use today. And you know what that is. He used the word of God. And this is one of the first weapons of spiritual warfare. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit is the word of God. The word of God is sharper than the two of your sword. That's what it says in Hebrews. Do you know why it says this? Because... The word. Jesus used the word. And everything has to bow down. In the name of Jesus and the word. Because everything 
in God's word is what God says and God is behind that. That God agrees with that. God accepts that. So what's ever in the word and you say, not from your own mind, not from your own words, but from the word of God, from the word of the almighty God, from the creator of the universe, everything else has to bow down and obey. Everything else has to step down and obey because it is the word of God, the words from God himself. That's why Jesus, he used the words to show us what we can do in our lives to take back territory from the enemy in this war. Jesus used the word against the devil. When the devil said, throw yourself off this building, because it says in this Psalm 91 that, you know, the angels will catch you when you fall. Jesus said to not test the Lord thy God. And he uses scriptures to combat the enemy. And then after three times, the enemy has to leave. After three times, the enemy left. And it also says in the scriptures that when a demon goes, when the devil goes from a territory because you have cast him out with prayer and fasting and supplication and the word of God, he'll come back with seven demons stronger than himself. If one demon is cast out, seven will come back more. And this is why we need to be so strong in the word of God in prayer. And the reason I'm saying these two points together is because they intertwine. You cannot pray without scripture. Your prayer, well, you can pray without scripture, but it will have no furtherance. It will have no sustenance. It will have no power. The word of God needs to be used in every aspect of your life that's why when churches go and do bible study or bible memorization this is why because they are trying to sow down the word in your heart so when you're in those tough times you do not have a bible you do not when you seem like you don't have anything when everything is breaking down in your life you can come and fall upon those scriptures you can come and fall upon those scriptures Even without the Bible. That is why we memorize scriptures. So when we fight our battles, when we fight this war that we have been put into, we use the word of God. Even if we do not have a Bible around, we can instantly pray, use the word of God on the street, in our workplace, at home, on the bus. We can use it in the car. We can use the word of God, just let it flow forth. Out of us and cut, cut the enemy left, right, left, right. Let me tell you the story. Wow, look at the time already. <laughs> uh, let me tell you this story. When I was really, really sick, uh, if you've been listening to this channel for a very long time, you know I was doing 2017, 2016, that period of time in my life. When I was very, very sick. And it was one Tuesday night. I remember this so vividly. I remember it so vividly. It was a Tuesday night. These are one of, this is one of the reasons why I upload the preaching every Tuesday night. One of the reasons. I was laying in bed, right? And I just felt so sick. I couldn't move my body. All I could was hear and move my eyes. I was basically... In the sense, paralyzed. I was just stuck there on my bed, laying down. And my mom, she was praying for me. And my mom is a prayer warrior. She understands spiritual warfare. She is a prayer warrior. She prayed for me and prayed and prayed and prayed. But I wasn't getting better. I wasn't feeling better. And then, the Holy Spirit told her. That she needed to repent. That she needed to repent. And use the word of God. And when my mom repented. And used the word of God. To start praying over me. Again and again and again. Something. It was, this was late in the night as well. Something just rejuvenated in me. I can see. I still remember. Seven 
demons. Demons in packs of seven. Seven demons in one pack. And there were four packs. So about, that's about that's 28 demons all together in rows. And as soon as my mom started to use the word of God and repented, I could see these demonic-like black shadowy figures start to be cut left, right, left, right. I could see the cuts and bruises on their body. I remember so it's still in my image and my mind right now. I can still remember the cuts on their arm, the bruises on their face, the hits in their eye. And I believe that if my mom did not repent that night, and if she did not use the word of God that night to pray for my life, I would not be here speaking to you today. I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. All I could use was my eyes, my ears. Couldn't even speak. And I felt, and I know that if my mom did not repent and pray and didn't, and did not use the word of God in her prayer, that I know I would have not been here today. I would have been in a grave tomb. Been in a, a memorial center, grave tomb, a grave tomb right now. And these are one of the reasons why, these are one of the many reasons why I upload on a Tuesday night. It's Tuesday is such a significant and important day that so many spiritual things has happened for me. But back to the word, back to the message. What's the meaning of that story? Is that when you do not pray with the word of God, nothing happens. That is why I say Prayer and the word of God, the sword of the spirit, is interlinked. Because without prayer, you cannot use the word of God. And without the word of God, you cannot use prayer. They're interlinked like faith and love. So we use prayer and the word of God to, as our attacking, as our offense. Yet, as our defense... You may see swordsmen use their swords on the attack and have shields for their defensive stance. But some warriors, some warriors only was able to wield a sword. And so they would use their sword as their defense also. And so can we use our sword and the word of God and prayer as defense. Defense. So can we use prayer and the word of God as our defense also. When the enemy says, oh, you're ugly. You'll never look as good as them. You just say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am made in the image of God. And if all these other people are made in the image of God, then I am made in the image of God and I am not ugly. Because then if I am ugly, then by their standards, they are ugly. And that means God is ugly. And that is impossible because it contradicts his word. So I'm not ugly because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, crafted by the creator God, a masterpiece in his creation. A masterpiece in his painting. And that's what we use. That is just one. Goodness me, just one. One of the ways, one of the weapons that we can use in our spiritual warfare and in our battle. I want us to go to Ephesians 6, verse 10. Say amen when you're there. Ephesians 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And it says, verse 11. And I'm going to read up to verse 18. Put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet, with the preparation of the gospel 
of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you'll be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked one, which is the devil. And to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. That is such a hefty, hefty scripture. But right there, it named the whole purpose. That seven verses named the whole purpose of spiritual warfare. And next week, next week, we are going to be doing a scriptural analysis on Ephesians 6, 10 to 17. Verse 10 to 17. That is what we'll be doing next week. A scriptural analysis on Ephesians 6, 10 to 17. Verse 10 to 17. But what it really unpacked there is our enemy. It gave us three targets. Our enemy, our armour, and our weapons. And I just covered one. One of our weapons. This topic is so broad. I do not know how many messages it will take to cover this entire topic, but it's so broad. And that is only a small piece of information, even about the sword of the spirit and the word of God in prayer. It is so small, yet so large in our lives to fight the war that we ourselves are in. Now, I want us to take back the territory that the enemy has stole from us. I believe that the enemy over the centuries has been clawing, and especially in the 21st century, has been clawing away at our territory. Clawing away at our territory. And we need to fight and take it back. Use the authority that God has set. Use the authority that God has given upon us. I'm going to link in the description at the bottom of this video, authority. The video of authority. The message on authority. I will, I will link that in the description below. But what the overall message today is that prayer and the word of God the two main weapons of our warfare prayer and the word of god those are our two main weapons of warfare against the enemy those are our two main offensive let me say offensive weapons of warfare and a defensive weapon of warfare now jesus died on the cross for you and i to make these weapons this authority that we have in christ possible He died on the cross for you and I. If he did not die and take away our sins, we would, our punishment would be death. Not everlasting life, just eternal death. Eternal nothingness. For the wages of sin is death. But Jesus died on the cross. He took our sin. He took our punishment. He was the last Adam. He took back what the first Adam gave. And he died on the cross for you and I. To the keys back from death and the grave. And now has given us a choice. You either accept him as your Lord and Savior and acknowledge what he has done for you. And start walking on the right path. Or ignore and still to live your sinful life. But now you know the cost and you made that decision. So if you just feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart and you feel feel the presence of God, or you feel just something, just your heart's beating, you feel something in your heart, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Even if you're a born again Christian, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me. And I receive you now as my Lord and my Saviour from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen and hallelujah. 
from this Tuesday to next Tuesday, as I always challenge you to do, I want you, I want you just, if God tells you something, just write it down, quickly write it down. As it says in Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Write the vision down and make it plain on tablets. So whatever God tells you this week, I want you just to write it down. Write it in your notes. Even if it's just a simple thought, write it down. Make it plain on tablets so that when you read it, you will run with it. And that is what I want us to do. For every day of the week until next Tuesday. I want us to write, even on our phone notes, if we don't have any paper, write it on your phone notes. Make a folder. Make a page to do with the notes that God gives you. Even something simple that God gives you. Write it down and make the vision plain on tablets. That you, when you go back and you look on it, You see the revelations that God has given you and that you may run with that revelation. And that is what I ask you to do from this Tuesday to next Tuesday. Now, this has been You Are In A War Part 2. I just wanted to say thank you for listening. Ha, it's a good